Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I always figured if I left these two electrician shears unsupervised in a dark tool bag, when I came back next time, I might have something like this. It's like a combination of these two, which is actually a great tool. This is a Knipex 950520. It's about 40 bucks. It's an angled or pistol grip electrician shear, and it's got some of the features of both of these uh, as well as a couple of its own things. Um, it is the same kind of handled material here. It's fiberglass reinforced plastic with this overmolding, rubbery, grippy surface. Um, plenty of that. Uh, nicely, um, nicely laid out here. Very smooth. It has a spring mechanism, so it is like this one. Um, like the C-Jet which means it also has a lock. Notice the lock is quite pronounced compared to the C-Jet. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, as far as the blades go, it's a similar layout to the smaller. You can see this is the 9505-155. Uh, it's about a $20 shear. This uh, design is about the same, but obviously the pistol grip one is larger. And it has a cutout here for maybe, I don't know, more questionable wires. None of, it's not designed to cut steel or hard wire. Uh, it's softer wire, like mainly copper, aluminum, etc. But it also um, can cut a fairly large cable of the softer wire with that big opening. Uh, you notice as it squeezes down, it makes a smaller and smaller center hole. That keeps it from kind of smearing all the, the wire strands from smearing away different directions. Uh, like the small one, it has a lower serrated blade and the upper blade is razor sharp and smooth. It has two crimping points right here. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. And uh, like this one, although it does not have the stripping capabilities, it did get a uh, tether hole. Now you could argue this one's got two giant tether holes, but sometimes you don't want to use up valuable real estate by throwing a cord through there. Um, so that's always welcome. Now, first of all, um, the handle is different. Um, notice I have four fingers in it. When I started using this, I thought, man, this is really comfortable. So here's what's going on. This one is a two-fingered handle. That's all you can get in here. It's got a little notch, you know, a little lever or ledge that you can drop another finger onto. Um, or it's got some jimping up here if you want to add a little bit of precision. I think the precision is a little tough to do without a spring-loaded tool, though. I jump up to the C-Jet. I can fit three fingers in here. Um, and I can either rotate up Nice little jimped area there for precision, or I've got a ledge back here for the little finger. However, two things. One, first, there's only three fingers. But second, the way this is shaped, a uh, very small thing that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise, is the ovalness of it has its highest points up near the center, and then it drops rapidly as you move towards the bottom. What that does is it forces your fingers together and you can see they start squishing pretty quick. They don't necessarily have to squish up here, but as soon as they go down, they do. Whereas this one, here's four fingers in here. And notice how they've got the expanded area. The widest point is down near the bottom where your fingers are and it curves up here. And they've got a couple of indentations. But not a, finger, not a little ledge here. I can stick my, my fingers in or I can move my index up for a little bit more precision. And that's where that, um, that spring comes into, in handy. Also, you get a much better sight line when you're trying to do kind of recessed work because you don't have the handle getting in the way as you're trying to see. It's much easier to work with the um, with a pistol grip or an angle plier. The length on this thing, I'm getting about 18 centimeters or about seven inches in American. Um, the box says, uh, or the ads for it say it's about six and a quarter inches. I'm not sure, you know, where they're getting that six and a quarter. I can't get six and a quarter out of this no matter what I do, but no big deal. It does not come with a sheath. You know, like this one came with this. Nice little friction fit one. The C-Jet came with this. 
blade cover. Well, this came with nothing. However, they do sell this on its own. And this right here, this is the 001975LE. It's a black nylon sheath. It's got a little elastic, I guess, pen or pencil holder here. It's friction fit, but it holds it well. And one of the big things is, remember I said I, that this was a big, um, a big tab there? If I tried to stick this into here, notice that it kicks that off. So it doesn't actually fit in the C-Jet one anyway, but if I tried it with my existing Knipex uh, blade sheath, when I put this in, watch what happens. It just slides it right back. So it's actually held in because it's sprung open. Not a good thing, so can't get away with that. So get one of these. Problem is this is 20 bucks for this sheath. However, my new baby here, the offspring of those two, it was 40 bucks. So it's 60 bucks now. I could use this for other stuff, but I, I know I won't. But it might come in handy uh, someday if I drop these, which I've been known to drop some tools. Now, here's the problem with this thing. It does have these two crimping points. Those crimping points, I have tried the smaller one. This is actually, um, it's for, the top big one is for uh, four to eight gauge and the 10 to 12 or 10 to 20 gauge crimpers is at the bottom. This hole here I think is too small. It doesn't center this very well, doesn't hold it, and I've had these things kind of walk out and pop sideways. I've been playing around with these for a while, trying to think, am I missing something before I go with a video? Um, it's, I think the big problem is a good crimp, you know, requires some effort. You're going to smash metal and you want it to hold. Well, this is pretty much right on top of your effort in this lever system. In other words, the, the fulcrum's out here, but your effort and your load are in the same spot, which means you're not getting a whole lot of benefit. This one, the little bit bigger one, is closer to the pivot, so you do get, or closer to the fulcrum, you do get a little bit more leverage, but that only goes up to eight. I don't do a whole lot of eight. But anyway, I've tried this over and over, and it just, you just can't really get a good crimp. Um, I was, you know, cutting and, or, um, I was uh, stripping this and sliding it in and trying it, and it would slide right back out. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think that's working out as well as it should, but let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Um, now, Knipex does make some dedicated crimpers, so I you know threw it in a dedicated one here and just smashed it with one hand. You know, no problem because I've got this huge lever arm. Knipex by the way, makes all kinds of different specific cable cutters for hard metal, soft metal, big, small. You can't stuff everything into a pair of electrician shears. So you don't want to use this for any kind of steel wire, braided wire that's, that's hard steel. Um, it's just not designed for it. Get the right tool for that job. And unfortunately, I think you also need the right tool, which is a crimper. So. Just, uh, just pointing that out. But anyway, overall, I think it's a great tool. I'm glad Knipex released it. A little late, maybe. I mean, others have had these things for a while. In fact, I did a C-Jet video, uh, gosh, probably well over a year ago, I imagine. Um, but it's nice to have a good Knipex tool here. I just wish it came either with a good blade cover or the sheath, or maybe a package deal and cut the price on this thing. But anyway, there it is. And with that, Doc out.